What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. All right, so. Oh, I didn't even realize I was recording. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica. I was like, I might as well start. I was trying to see what was going on in the background, girl, if this stuff was happening. It's a lot going on. So I was trying to see if I needed to change, do some a little camera direction. All right. So what's up, everybody? We are down here, honey. This is a long sleeve protect your energy shirt. Um, I, I have it on this morning because it's cold this morning and I didn't want to put on a um um a jacket and then I have my protect your energy socks they're not that that wasn't a good presentation <laughs> that wasn't a good presentation here you go so here it is so it's on the front and the back so it like wraps around it says protect your energy so those are my protect your energy socks and long sleeve shirt go get yours now <laughs> oh and i'm drinking mud water yes okay so let me tell you my mud water story i guess we all have a mud water story i wanted to try mud water a long time ago um probably like last year might have been around the in the when the panorama started but i was always seeing these ads and um but i was like okay like this looks like has mushrooms in it, has everything, all of these good herbs and stuff like that. And you can replace it for coffee, which if y'all have not gotten a clue, I enjoy coffee. I've been drinking coffee since my grandfather gave me coffee when I was like five years old. <laughs> my grandfather used to give me coffee in um, this, this brown a little short, probably about a four ounce tumbler, Tupperware. It was brown. And he used to put so much sugar and so much creamer. And the it was just a little cup of coffee. And I used to be there in the morning drinking co coffee with my grandfather. Shout out to my grandpa. Shout out to my grandpa. That's what was up. But I love coffee. So I remember when I was pregnant, and you, of course you can't drink coffee. And I was like, oh, my God, I want some coffee so bad. So I went and got some coffee ice cream. But then I was reading the ingredients and I was like, oh, it's really coffee in here. <laughs> but I was like, I guess it's OK. It's ice cream. Yeah. So that's how much I love coffee. So I'm trying my water. So, I'll, OK, so let me get back because I was thinking about my grandpa now. So um, I was like, OK, I'm going to get it. And then I found this YouTube channel called Themis and Thoth. And I started watching him and then he said that shout out to themis he said that he just got this mud water and how horrible it is right <laughs> i was like no and i even shared with him i was gonna get that i wanted to get some too i wanted to try that but he gave me a review and i i used to think to myself maybe he's not mixing it maybe he's just drinking it on its own maybe he's not putting creamer or any type of like sweetener in it or anything like that so then he finally, I think he's finally got some recipes to where now he is making it because it does not taste good. I mean, it's literally called mud water. So I got some and I bought a 30 day supply and I have some now in here. Now I tasted it without any sweetener or creamer or anything like that. And yeah, no, I would be like, no, girl, this is a mess. So it does taste better. It has like a chai flavor. Um, but it does, I don't have the container with me, so I could tell you what's in mud water. Hold on, I'll tell you guys. It's really interesting. I don't have a lot of time, so I was like, let me just make a video about nothing, because I don't even know what's going on in the world. I was watching, um, Little Black Books, um, video about, um, Black women pulling back their support of um, the the fellow that was killed by his girlfriend over the was it over the weekend or the other day, um, and how like I literally have been so 
happy to actually be able to see that support has been withdrawn. Like there hasn't even been contributed. There has been no support. Very few, like Angela Rye was like, oh, y'all can't act like this. Cause I was reading the comments and when I tell you every single comment was like, nah, nah, I'm good. You good. We good. Anybody want anybody, anybody want anything from Target? I'm going to Target today. I mean, like, and like, the thing is no one, no one wants anyone to, you know, in the, have their lives ended in such a tragic way. But just like little black book was saying, you cannot disparage or defame a group of people. And then when you need them, call on them for support like that, that has been done over and over and over and over to our detriment. And I think there's enough people now that are moving like, I'm like, when I tell you how pleased I am, they are really moving as a collective and saying, nope, to the point where people who are in positions are like, oh, um, yeah, the black women are not, they haven't come, they're not coming, <laughs> they're not coming. And like I said this morning on Twitter, it, the, the um, what's the Anti-Defamation League, the ADL with the Jewish folks, it's about to be one for the black ladies. Because let me tell you something, the girls are going to do research to find out whether or not you, your voice, your plight should be amplified by black women. Those days are over where they're being mules without anything in return. And I, like I said, I was so pleased to see that collectively, like on all the blogs, honey, I was in the comments. I'm just reading the comments, you know, because I'm a human observer and I'm just reading the comments and air, like all of them. Didn't he say something in Angela Rye's um, comments? Girl, pull back. This ain't it. And I'll tell you one thing. These women who are call themselves social justice warriors, if they see the collective of black women is saying, "Uh uh-uh, we're not doing this. You all need to be on code. I'm, that's just how I feel. Now, whether you do it or not, that's up to you. But I think collectively there has been a locking of arms and saying, okay, this is this is what we're gonna do from now on. Something comes out, somebody do a background check on this person, we get the the thing in the sky, the signal in the sky, we're gonna do just like black men do. When they when the fuck nigga does something out here in the streets, they all the little dusty F, everybody starts coughing, and they come out in droves to protect each other. We're gonna start doing the same thing where when you need us because you don't respect us but when you need us then you want us to be there for you and now we're saying oh wait a minute you said something 10 years ago 2020 when did how long ago what Mm -mm. sorry what i'm sorry i can't hear you turn the volume down put the window up i'm putting the window up however whatever kind of car you got You know what I'm saying? Hey, Siri, roll the windows up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm glad she didn't hear me. So let me talk about this mud water, honey. So mud water, inside of mud water, here, I'll tell you. Well, I need to find out if they got a link, honey, because if I'm going to be talking, I'm going to be, t- but I got to give you, I'll, I'll give you, I'm starting today. So here's a product description. So you have... Ayurvedic herbs, adaptogens, and cacao, which is for natural energy focus and immune support. Um, Let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, here it is on the side of the thing. So it has masala chai, cacao, lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga, reishi, cinnamon, turmeric, and Himalayan salt. And so and then they also have like a sweetener and a creamer. I actually got those. Um, I didn't, I've, 
I probably need to kind of mess with the the measurements a little bit because I still had to add a little oat milk to my concoction. So, so far it tastes good um, and I'll let you know how I feel about it, you know, when, when I'll let you know how I feel about it, you know, I'm gonna run my mouth. So yeah, so that's what I was noticing yesterday. I was just like, wow, there are so many women who are like, absolutely not. I was really shocked. And what, and you know what? And you are going to have, there's always going to be, what is it? There's, it's never all, it's always some. So there will always be some, always who are going to be like, no, 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 wait, it's a black man. Wait, you know, in the you know, the cape starts flapping over here and the, and the fist goes up in the air. Wait! There's always going to be some. But the majority has to be louder than the sum. Do you understand? Just like the majority is louder than the sum when it comes to the behaviors of other people, right? There's always, oh, it's not all of them. Yeah, it's always some of them, but the not alls are not saying anything. So when the not all of them start speaking up for the sum of them and telling the sum of them to change their behavior, nothing's gonna change because there's always gonna be some. And I think that's just how life goes anyway like it's it's odd to me because we all we need one side or of the other that's necessary and it's really about where you find yourself in the ecosystem of society who what role are you going to play in this game you know choose your fighter you know and what role do you play? Like everybody's not going to be everything, right? Like when I tell you, when I tell you all, I was about to say you guys, I'm trying to stop saying that because I think it's, you know, first of all, yeah, well, you know why I'm not saying it. I think everybody understands why we got to get, we got to get away from using male pronouns to describe groups of people um, because groups of people are not always guys, right? But anyway, so like I tell you all, um, I forgot what, my, what I was going to say. <sighs> I forgot what I was going to say. That's what happens when I start over explaining and start explaining stuff so that the people who don't know, that's a occupational hazard. <laughs> And it, it really is because I know y'all know what the F I'm talking about. But then I go on to explain to that one person who doesn't know, you know, that's and now I forgot what I was talking about. Anyways, so um, the duality, one has to exist where you find yourself in the ecosystem um, and what role you have to play. Just like I always tell y'all that I'm not going to get out. I'm not going to get out with you and burn a tiki torch every single time um, Kim and them say something. I'm not going to do it every single time. I'm not, right? I know there's a collective, a large collective of people who feel a certain way about them, but I can't, every single thing she does, I can't jump in there with y'all and put on my khaki pants and my red polo shirt and get my tiki torch out. You know what I'm saying? I can't do that every single time because literally we, I think we do have to find who we are in your, the community that you identify with. Um, cause like I said, everybody can't do everything. Everybody has their role. Like everybody is not an activist. That's one thing. It's like, everybody's not an activist. Everybody's not about to get out in the streets and march for things. Everybody's not a social justice warrior. Everybody is not into politics. Everybody is not into Everybody has their role. And I, and this is what I thought about when I was just saying that it's like, if you are 
whatever role that you're playing, say you're the girl who loves politics, say you're the girl who's good with the legal side of things, you have to understand that the role that other people play are not going to have the same level of knowledge in that area than you do. So I think it's always great to like approach things with an understanding like, okay, she's not protesting against this. This is not how she sees things or um, she doesn't know what this legal term is. Let me explain it to her because clearly she, that's not her lane. You know what I mean? It's almost like everybody literally has a lane or role and those roles change, you know, levels of consciousness change, you change, your role can change. Like you might have, um, like you might have been a, a person who was always out protesting for people on the front lines for people. And then you're a level of consciousness change that you no longer that no longer resonates with you it no longer moves you to do that so you step away from doing those types of things because it doesn't sit well with your spirit you know what i'm saying um but i think everybody has their roles and i think where you whatever codes that you've been programmed with where your your strengths that's your role is to talk about those strengths and show people and teach people or whatever. You may not be a teacher. You may be a person who is like, like I said, I don't know. I'm just thinking of stuff because I think everybody has their role. And I feel like every, it made me think of like, um, Angela Rye when she was like, come on, you all, you know, like this is a person's life. And Da, da, da. But you don't know this person clearly was in domestic violence situation, like mutual going back and forth. These people, this was inevitable, like literally it was inevitable that what was going to happen to that fella. It was, it was bound to happen. That's her role. You understand what I'm saying? She's, that's her program. She's going to say, that's what she's supposed to say, right? Angela Rye is supposed to say, no, guys, come on. And then the ones who have changed their consciousness as it relates to jumping up and having that, you know, response to like jump up in front of somebody, I think she's always going to be there saying, come on, guys, you know? And then, but I feel like as a collective, I know my thoughts are all over the place, but I feel like as a collective, when they see like the, the women who play that role, when they see like a large collective of women that you would need, you're always going to need the, the black woman. You are. And it's just like, I think. I don't know. I feel like people are understanding that. Like, I feel like some, one more thing needs to happen and it doesn't have to be tragic or major. It just has to be another like test to see, like you're on this journey and you come across, you come, I feel like you come to these tests and until you pass the level, until you pass the level, then as soon as you pass that test at the end of the level, then you go to the next room or the next level, you unlock an achievement, and then you go to the next stage. But I feel like that lesson that you passed on the last level is going to show up again to see if you remember how you figured it out the last time, or you're going to do something different thinking that you're going to have a different result. Did you learn the lesson? You know what I'm saying? You know, I'll give you an analogy, girl. You know I will. Anyways, so, yeah, this is actually really good. Mm, I think I'm going to talk until the red light comes on. So, let's see. We can see what's going on on the blacks. Mm, that's a lot of stuff going on in the world. It's so funny because the first, like, okay, I'm on Hollywood Unlocked. So the first post is a post about Kim 
Second post looks like an ad. The third post is Hazel Lee. The fourth post is uh, this um, Frank James, this um, black man who committed that crime on the um, New York City um, subway. The fifth post is about Chloe. So one, first one, two, three, four, fifth post. <laughs> Iggy Azalea laughs off ex-boyfriend's Playboy Cardi's claim that he takes care of her. Let's not get carried away. She got the same, shout out to Cynthia G. She got the same black man, honey. That's, that's where you, um. Uh, then you know you done fucked up. Why would who would you bet on? No, oh, I don't know. Oh, and then here's Larsa. Is that Larsa? Oh no, it's Nikki Baby. What's her name? Nikki from um Love and Hip Hop. What was her name? Nikki, Miss Nikki Baby. I thought that was Larsa. That's crazy. I really did think that was Larsa. That's why I was like, okay, see, this is like, you know, I'm trying to see a pattern here with Hollywood Unlocked because I'm like, I feel like all of the posts are just like a bunch of Kardashian stuff. Apple Watts' sister gives an update saying that the love and hip hop star is still unresponsive, but stable. Um, her sister, Dominique Fleur Flournoy, Flournoy, my baby still unresponsive, but stable. She will undergo surgery on the 15th. For her right eye that doesn't close all the way, they will be putting a weight in the lid that will still allow her to open and close her eye. Still, her nerves are bad on that side. And if it, that isn't done, she could have complications or even go blind because her eye isn't closing all the way. Um, I do need everyone to share a tag, do whatever is needed for her GoFundMe. I need to move her stuff out of her apartment. Doctors also mention a payment for transportation, waiting for a call back on that. But please share the link and keep the prayers coming. Yeah, you know, y'all know that Apple Watts got into a car accident, um, a major car accident. I just really hope that her quality of life is fully restored or, you know, to where she doesn't, I don't know, like the eye thing, just describing that. It's just like, and she's unresponsive. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel so bad. I feel so sad for her family. And doesn't she have children? I feel like Apple has children, right? <sighs> I just really hope she's just fully restored to where she can have a good quality of life. Um, who else? Okay, that's Hollywood Unlocked. Let's see, we have a few more minutes. So let me go, maybe go to the Jasmine brand. Oh yeah, it's right here. Ari Linux is not, what? Oh. Girl. Oh, I didn't watch. I did not watch last night. Was wait a minute. Was what you call it on last night? New Jersey. New Jersey came on last night. Are y'all sure? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on a second. Cause girl, this is not what it's not. Wait, oh, it did come on. So I need to watch that so I can give y'all the review. Okay, anyways, I need to go. I think that's enough. What you think? I think that's enough. Y'all, I'm just really happy that the, the girls are on code. I am really, it makes me proud. It really does. It really does. It just really does. I just feel like it's just natural. Like it's unnatural to have a, like, like just like I was saying, Everything, each side, everything has another side of it. Everything, there's a thin line. Everything has another side of it. It's just the law of duality in that sense, right? Everything, everything. 
So if you're in a community where it's constantly this and it's none of this, I think after a while, it is only natural for the other side to adapt to that and either keep accepting the deficiency or adjust and say, okay, this is not coming back to me. I am going to learn the lesson and not give anything or any energy in that direction anymore. And you might see, unfortunately, a breakdown because literally you need black women. (laughs) You do. You do. And it's just like, And unfortunately, there is a collective of people who are in our society who don't, who haven't seen the repercussions of disrespecting Black women. And I think Black women have said, you know what? We're not going to (laughs) wait. And this is what I really love. We're not going to wait for people to come and protect us. We're going to start protecting ourselves and standing up for each other not this not on this sisterhood girl code none of that it's just simple back and forth reciprocity that's it when you're no longer when it's no longer mutually beneficial for you to be in relationship with anything relationship with anything food men shopping when the relationship isn't giving it's no longer mutually beneficial you have to end the relationship and it has taken black women a long time and i really feel it has a lot to do with the generation z the millennials gen x like i'm gen x And it's not a lot of us. Like, it's not a lot of us. um, But there's a lot, like, who reject and who are like, no. And I think, what was I watching? Um, What was I watching? I can't remember who I was watching. I think it was Uppity Unicorn. Shout out to Uppity Unicorn. And she was reading the... um, is Marriage for White People, Ralph Richard Banks' book. And she read an excerpt of this woman saying that her identity was in how much she loved, how much she could show love to Black men. And she called out, she's like, she didn't say children. She didn't say other women. This is a woman who said that her identity was based on how much she loved the black men in her family. And it's like, there are so many women who are deprogramming from that worship because the only, you can only describe it as worship when it's like, you're not seen, you have faith in something, you kind of, you've not seen a return on the prayers, on the thoughts and prayers, on the money, on the support, on the emotional labor, you're not seeing a return on that investment. I think the younger generations are like, oh no, that doesn't work for us anymore. As women, we want to see a return and you're not giving us a return. We cannot return in that support in that way. We are not going to amplify your voice. We're not going to uplift you in your plight. None of that. Because when it's time to do it for us as a collective, it's like crickets, literally like crickets. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to return it in kind. You're going to hear crickets back. They're not coming. (laughs) Anyways, y'all take care of each other. Protect your energy. Peace. Daddy, daddy, watch me twirl. Daddy, watch me.